Welcome back to uh, the last interview of our UEG Week Congress TV. Uh, I would like to introduce my two guests. Um, on the extreme left, we have uh, Professor Edouard Louis, um, the head of uh, gastroenterology department in the University of Liège in Belgium. And next to him, we have Dr. Uh, Peter Bosseid from the Imeda Hospital um, in Bonhaden, exactly. So, Let's start with some general um, questions about the UEG. Um, you actually just um, ha had the, uh, headed the uh, workshop of IBD monitoring. So could you give us an overview about the highlights of this year? So about IBD monitoring, was, uh, what was really clear is that the uh, important thing is to monitor patient. So we have seen through the uh, session that we have several tools that we could use, uh, being either endoscopy, biomarkers, imaging, uh, even patient reporting symptoms also is an important aspect. But the important thing is to keep contact and have this monitoring and adapt the treatment strategy to this monitoring. And so the monitoring is becoming the center of the management of IBD. Because whatever the drug or the treatment that you choose, you should still keep monitoring to adapt therapy. Uh, and this is probably currently the best option to improve outcome for our patients. Okay. And our for example, the structures of the health system adapted to this kind of monitoring, if it's like have to be regular, how kind of financing do you need for that? Is it like feasible? Yeah, some aspects may require some uh, adaptation in the system. For example, it was very clearly highlighted that if you want the patient to have uh, uh, reporting very regu regularly their symptoms, mm -hmm. you need a structure. To, to do that. You need a structure to uh, analyze the data that will be reported by the patient and you need a structure, you, meet, you need people to do that and, and to uh, help to integrate all the things and adapt treatment strategy. So it, it has a cost, but on the other side, it has been shown that such kind of monitoring and uh, some such, such kind of follow-up will decrease the rate of hospitalization and of complication. So the idea is that what you invest on one side, you can certainly get some money back from other sides. Mm. And that's the important thing. All these monitoring aspects will cost some money, but it should uh, uh, allow to spare money from uh, uh, complication, hospitalization, and, and sometimes from treatment also. Yeah, this is an interesting aspect. Mm. Um, Dr. Bosset. What do you think actually about the uh, compliance of the patients? We know that the, most of the patients of IBD are maybe young women who have a very um, active life, like traveling, going to the university. So do you think it's feasible to have like a regular uh, monitoring with these kind of patients? I think it's feasible, but um, uh, the first thing you should do, if you have a diagnosis of uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, I think it's extremely important that you discuss what you're going to do with the patient. Mm -hmm. So you have to try to engage the patient into your strategy. Okay. So and make the patient a part of your strategy. And the best thing is what you can do from the start on, say what you're going to do in the next steps and during the monitoring. Uh, and then when once the patient is engaged, I think he understands what you're going to do. He mm -hmm. understands the reason what you're why you're doing that and in that way it's 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 feasible also for the for the patients although some tests uh, and this has been shown are not so easy for the patients or they are quite reluctant to, to that so like uh, uh, collecting stool samples and so on but if you explain well to the patient what is the importance and if uh, one test can avoid another test and it will uh, have uh, the patient will have better outcomes at the end I think it's uh, it's it's quite feasible to engage the patients and to to convince the patients to do a strict uh, monitoring. Okay, great. So you previously in the um, workshop session you spoke about combining endoscopy and biomarker uh, for monitoring of IBD. Can you tell us how to best combine them? Well, there are different ways uh, to combine them, but uh, uh, basically the most important is that you have a clear and good baseline assessment. And in that baseline assessment, you should choose your biomarkers, which you will follow during your monitoring. 
And then if you, once you have chosen your, uh, your biomarkers, you can follow. Those biomarkers will, will give you the direction of when to do your endoscopy and how much you have to do your endoscopy. It doesn't mean that we have to repeat endlessly the endoscopies. The biomarkers can help us to refine your monitoring strategy and even to avoid uh, multiple colonoscopies uh, in the long way. Okay, so basically we are moving to a more individualized kind of medicine actually mm. with this monitoring, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Professor Louis, um, basically nutrition is gaining importance in the medical practice actually of uh, gastroenterology. Do you think that monitoring the nutrition of patients could be also be important actually to the whole monitoring of IBD? Uh, probably yes. It's an evolving area. Uh, actually, I would say that 30 to 40 years ago, uh, regimens were important. People were, we had no drug at that time, yeah. and, and people were uh, uh, counseling a lot of types of regimens to, to the patient. And then when we got some new drugs, uh, yeah. including biologics, uh, the doctors felt that it was less important to, to, uh, to look at the nutrition. But no, there are some more epidemiological data clearly highlighting the fact that these diseases are developing in uh, Western countries or in countries who are living in a Western way. And there are also uh, labor laboratory data and research data highlighting that some of the uh, contents of the uh, nutrition uh, may actually uh, impact the mucosa and its homeostasis. So today it's becoming clear both from these uh, basic research data and from epidemiologic data that we probably need to take care of it. And there are some uh, data also coming from pediatrician who yeah. treat their patient with uh, exclusive diet to try to uh, avoid steroids, for example. And, and in, in this setting, they achieve uh, uh, both clinical improvement, but also biomarker improvement and sometimes mucosal healing. So it seems to work. So indeed, I think that in the future, beside new uh, uh, and sophisticated therapies and, and monitoring, mm. we probably will need to monitor the way people are eating, what they eat, give them uh, counseling on that with our nutritionist and probably also monitor uh, biologically some aspects of their nutritional status to improve the outcome. Definitely yes. Okay, so talking about uh, basic research, um, today we know more than 200 different variations, genetic variations um, in the Crohn's disease for example. Do you think we are near to find a cure for the disease? Uh, probably not through genetics. Because if we have found uh, more than 200 gene variants who are associated with the disease, we have found already the major one. Mm. The ones who are still missing are minor uh, genetic variation. And what we have seen is that actually the genetic background is just explaining the context. And it's just something which is favoring the development of the disease, but it's not the explanation of the disease. The explanation is probably uh, the uh, combination of this genetic background and some way of living, including nutrition, as, as we have just discussed. Mm. So I think that the cure will be very difficult to find because it's really uh, uh, a disease which is not linked or due to only one cause. Mm. It's actually what I tell the patient, they have a bad genetic combination, which is not per se a disease or in inducing the disease, but they have this risky combination and then the disease is actually triggered by some things which happen during their life. So when you have this model, it's very difficult to cure. What we can do is probably better control inflammation and if we can identify and change key elements in the environment, including nutrition, then we may have a more dramatic impact on the long-term outcome. But it will never be a cure because the genetic background will still be there and if they go back to their uh, previous way of living, the disease probably will come back. Okay, yeah, th those are interesting aspects mm. about the multifactorial um, way of um, yeah, having these kind of uh, yeah. diseases. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bosset, nowadays there are more and more startups, um, digital startups, getting into the field of, new of health um, and like the development of the artificial intelligence and so forth. And nowadays the patients are more connected actually to the internet and could more participate to um, maybe monitor their own diseases. 
um, do you have like already done some research in this kind of area or do you think that um, having a patient-centered monitoring would maybe help to make a better monitoring? Yeah, we have done some uh, research w uh, with an e-health tool in assessing the disease activity. The big problem with all those e-health tools and apps that appear now is that most of those apps are just uh, commercial apps and just uh, assess simple things like stool frequency, ab uh, uh, abdominal pain and so on. And they're not validated. I think we have to focus more on what is really important for the patient, not just the symptoms. I think we have to look wider. And, um, and to also what impacts on the on the daily life, like fatigue, uh, uh, body image, uh, sexual function. Those are things that are really important for the patient and are not assessed by, by the current uh, systems of uh, assessing disease activity. And another thing which is important if we use those apps, we may not overload the patient with those apps. If the patient is really sick, he will certainly follow those uh, that monitoring. But if the patient is okay and you ask him every week or every month to complete uh, um, 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 the survey on the uh, symptom monitoring uh, and, the, uh, and the social aspects of their life, I think it's uh, the, it's um, it's difficult to, in, to f that the patient is always again fa uh, over and over again faced with his uh, disease. And this is very very difficult in the to, to find the correct balance. Most studies that have been done in e health or studies that uh, uh, have had uh, a follow-up of uh, one or two years not longer and we we see also in those uh, uh, in those studies that you need to really to have a good selection of the patient mm -hmm. and also to find an exact balance on how much and how many times you are assessing uh, the patient not to not overload the patient okay so if I understand we still have to validate more and more this yeah, kind of I think um, certainly we should have uh, we should apps, validate right? uh, that mm -hmm. I think just f using those apps those should be integrated it. The best is that we integrate them like we are doing now in a uh, uh, in, into the medical records of the um, uh, of the patient uh, when you are integrating uh, bio biomarkers when you are integrating endoscopy. Then, then you even have a broader view uh, from symptoms to social aspects to also more objective markers of disease activity, and this will certainly help. Not only the apps alone, I think. Okay. One of the interesting apps is the IBD disc. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, the IBD disc is a uh, it's an it's a system that is integrated in an app and it uh, uh, evaluates uh, uh, disease activity, but also the disability of the patients. It's derived from the disability index that has been developed for research. And mm. um, uh, in the Delphi consensus, we uh, have developed a the IBD disc, selecting ten items that are most important for uh, follow up of the patient. And um, we have a presentation also here uh, during the Congress where we have tried to correlate the uh, PROs, existing PROs that, uh, uh, that are available for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and compare that with uh, the IBD disc. And what we see is that indeed the items of the IBD disc focusing on disease activity are well colorated, but the other items like the, 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 the psychosocial items are absolutely not well colorated. And for this, the IBD disc, is, it's, it's very important that we have that now because it can give you a structured approach of, of not only the disease activity but also the psychosocial aspects of the disease and give you more insights in what is happening with uh, the patients and also the items that are really important for, uh, for the patients. So it's an added value on top of the existing PRO, certainly. Okay, so we're going towards more holistic health approach actually, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Okay, I would uh, close with a final question. Uh, what are your expectations from the UAG week? I have big expectations. Uh, I think there are not that many new trials, but it's more uh, on the uh, implement, uh, Im implementation of existing evidence. I think it's uh, it's uh, it will be uh, a nice uh, congress. I think mm -hmm. uh, there are not that many drugs, new drugs currently for uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis that will be presented here. But I think it's more important that, like we said before, the more holistic approach, integrating the different systems we have now, and this will be uh, there are a lot of presentations on that during this week it's really um, uh, I'm looking forward okay and uh, what are your expectations well the same as uh, my colleague Peter Bostoid but also the fact that it's a place where you can meet uh, interact with people to develop new projects or make some project existing uh, uh, advanced well I think that the UEG uh, W has really become the 
biggest congress in gastroenterology, I would say, in the world. It was not the case in the past, but the, really the quality of the presentation that are uh, put here is, is really excellent, and it's really the way where uh, best trials are also presented today. Okay, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Pleasure.